Hi my dear conquerors this is Dr Kalyani from team MDS Conquer today we'll talk about bone loss patterns and trauma from occlusion so coming to that bone destruction is caused by extension of the gingival inflammation if in case of a gingivitis you have more of coccoid and straight rods in periodontitis you have more of spirochetes similarly the fibroblasts and lymphocytes are replaced by plasma cells so histopathological changes seen are the gingival inflammation extends into the collagen fiber bundles so it follows the course of blood vessels through the loosely arranged tissue around them into the alveola bone so our concern is how is it reaching that of a alveola bone so it is concentrated in the marginal periodontium the reaction is then further much diffuse one so after you see once how it is coming to the bone it is more through the blood vessels and through its fibers so once they transmit you can see that here they have the blood supply these are the blood uh, vessels it supplies to that of a uh, to uh, the bone and you can see that already the inflammation has reached the bone so once it reaches the bone it spreads into the marrow spaces and replaces the marrow so the entire healthy marrow is replaced by leukocytic and fluid exudate so then there is a change in the cells that multinuclear osteoclasts and mononuclear phagocytes increase in number and they appear lining with hauschip's lacunae and the marrow spaces resorption proceeds within and they further thin that of a trabeculae so these are the changes which you can observe in case of a bone once the uh, the infection reaches the bone radius of action is a concept given by grant and show in 1979 which means that your bacteria and its uh, whatever toxin is there it has to be there in proximity with that of the bone so it has to be very close by or next to the bone in that diameter is around 1.5 to 2.5 so for example if the bacteria is here it can only affect 1.5 to 2.5 around it anywhere health, other areas would be healthy so they again have to move here to attack so that is why the range of effectiveness is 1.5 to 2.5 mm so when the combined with inflammation trauma from occlusion aggravates the bony destruction caused by inflammation and results in bizarre bone patterns so a scientist called as a glickman has come down to explain this particular procedure of association now how is it the pathway of the spread of plaque associated gingival lesion can change if forces of an abnormal magnitude are acting so already they are going in one phase so when there is a further application maybe they can start proliferating and infecting more the characteristic the or the character of progressive tissue destruction of the periodontium at a traumatized tooth will be different from that of a non traumatized tooth through the uh, studies they have done they have concluded it this way now he has said that we have two zones zone of irritation and zone of co destruction this is a zone of irritation where the bacteria sits and it starts irritating and this is a zone of destruction where you can see you have lot of destruction done in areas of connective tissue and alveolar bone coming to zone of irritation it is as we have seen it is in case of marginal and interdental gingiva and the zone tissue the soft tissues of this zone are bordered by hard tissue only on one side right so therefore the gingival inflammation is the result of irritation from the micro deposits microbial deposits and not from the trauma from occlusion that's how glickman concept doesn't support they say the trauma from occlusion is doesn't aggravate the destruction bony destruction coming to the zone of co destruction what happens in this zone this includes pdl root cementum and alveola bone it is coronally demarcated by transeptal and dento alveolar collagen fiber bundles and is a seat of lesion caused by trauma from occlusion he that is what proposed by glickman a one more scientist by name weyerhog has said that the distance between the subgingival plaque and the periphery of associated inflammatory cell infiltrate in gingiva and the surface of the adjacent alveolar bone is measured and he told that 
the angular bone defects and infra bony pockets occur equally often at periodontal sites of the teeth which are not affected by tfo and the loss of connective tissue attachment and the resorption of the bone around the teeth are exclusively the result of inflammatory lesion associated with the subgingival plaque so basically his focus of verrog was more on how the angular bony defects and infra bony pockets are being formed so there are various factors to determine how the bone morphology is present one is the thickness width and crestal angulation of interdental septa number 2 is the thickness of facial and lingual alveolar plates then it is fenestration and dehiscences the alignment of teeth is important root and root trunk anatomy is important root position proximity with another tooth surface so all these are the factors that determine the bone morphology so remember the seven maybe a bit can be asked which of the following is a factor that determines the bone morphology coming to the bone deformities or osseous defects so based on all these situations you have the defects like this dehiscence means the entire part is dehiscence have a dehiscence fenestration means having small holes that's how it is fenestrated then you have an angular defect whereas here you can see there is a quite a horizontal defect now there is a cohen who has classified based on the number of walls present because number of walls is certain once you open a flap uh, sorry once you open a flap you can see that uh, you you have these many number of walls very confidently so you don't get confused when they ask you based on number of walls present or based on the number of walls absent it is definitely based on number of walls present only because it is certainty then three osseous walls that is three when the three walls are present let it be buccal mesial distal or lingual mesial distal that is a three wall defect or a two wall defect if only buccal and lingual are there then it's a crater again you can say like all craters are two wall defects but not all two wall defects are craters then buccal and proximal walls lingual and proximal walls one wall defects if the proximal walls are present they are hemiseptal defects if buccal and lingual wall is or alone can also be present now that's what i will keep telling you that if it is all if that's why all the hemiseptal are one wall but not all the one wall are hemiseptal they can be presence of only buccal they can be presence of only lingual wall now coming to the combination that is up if you see up up from up you can see that there is only say around only one wall one wall is missing when you come down you can see that okay one two three walls are present so three wall plus two wall three wall plus two wall plus one so sometimes it can be from above its own you can only one wall once you come below then it is two at the apex you have three it is like that so for example if this is a wall like this from above if you see you cannot see this part then you cannot see this part so for example from above if you are seeing if uh, the structure is present from here then you can see that okay this means only you have only one wall but once you go down you can see that it has two walls okay that's how it is uh, it's called a combined wall defect now coming to the horizontal component first of all it is measured through neighbors probe it is a horizontal component so if it is less than 3 mm of horizontal attachment loss uh, it is class 1 it is class 2 when it is more than 3 mm of horizontal attachment loss and it is class 3 when it is a through and through furcation coming to vertical bone losses again you have angular defects like three wall two wall one wall and moving on to three wall defects in depth so here if you see you have it's called as a, it originally it's a intra bony defect so here you can see mostly that in case of mesial aspects of second and third maxillary and mandibular molars this is about the two wall most commonly craters for example this is a buccal wall this is a lingual wall and this is from a cross section you are seeing the tooth like this this particular defect is called it is having two walls and this is called crater coming to one wall defects where only a single wall is present the horizontal defects 
if you see a horizontal defect you have a equal bone loss overall like this okay this is a horizontal uh, defect mostly associated with that of a supra bony pockets so these are the osseous cr uh, craters as i have showed you this is exostosis it's a normal physiological variant fenestrations and dehiscences so when you see that uh, in case of fenestration the marginal bone is intact it is just like as a hole in the center like this coming to the buttressing bone formation uh, if it is within the jaw in the center it is central buttressing bone formation if it is towards the periphery it is peripheral buttressing and also called as lipping reverse architecture means just remember either reverse or one positive if it is how to remember uh, reversed means uh, generally this bone will go and this bone stays so we have like this but this is ulta that if you see you have the periphery is lost and the center is completely filled with the bone so this this kind of an architecture is called reverse architecture coming to the ledges ledges are plateau like bony margins caused by resorption of thickened bony plates so i told you furcation involvement uh, I, I, now that is which i have discussed earlier was a horizontal component if you see this is glickman's classification having class 1 class 2 sorry grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 and grade 4 so that was a hampton classification classification bas class 1 class 2 and class 3 that's one more kind of a classification and what we commonly follow is glickman's classification in glickman's classification grade 1 is early stage supra bony pocket in grade 2 it's a calde sac what is calde sac calde sac means a sac which is open at one end and closed at the other that means you have a furcation like if you for if you probe you can only pass from one side the other side you have a closed feature so it's called calde sac now number 3 is bone is not attached to the dome of furcation that means it is just covered by soft tissue but otherwise it is like grade 4 only so only grade 4 is you can actually see this lesion like this clearly so that's grade 4 furcation so that's all for this video thanks for your patience hearing